Good afternoon and welcome to the Age of Responsibility Socratic Seminar. And I am joined by Denver. Say hi, Denver. Hi. And I'm joined by Marcelino. Hi. And Emma. Hi. Okay. Um, we'll, be, we'll keep an eye out to see who else is coming into the seminar. And so um, as they come in, we'll figure out uh, who they are. Okay, so we are here to talk about the age of responsibility, and hopefully you have your articles with you. <laughs> um, what I want to do is look at the, um, the actual topic that you're going to write about so that we can kind of plan backwards. We can see um, wh where we want to get to, because this is the information you want to get out of your head right now and figure out. Um, what it is you want to say about the age of responsibility. So it's okay to take notes. This, this of course, will be recorded, so you can go back to it and listen to what we've talked about. But the prompt you're going to be giving says, in what is the age of responsibility, Alan Greenblatt observes, in America, adulthood already has its familiar compass points, 18 and 21. But what is the age of responsibility? And what if that age, the point when citizens are responsible enough to earn all of the rights of a democracy confers upon its people, bears no resemblance to the ages already enshrined in law? Finding the answers to those questions is a more complicated task than simply choosing a milestone birthday. What is the age of responsibility? That is, when should a person be considered to be an adult? Use your notes, readings, observations, and experience to support your position. In your response, be sure to consider all three R's, rights, rights, and responsibilities involved in becoming a mature person, an adult. So, whoops, it's this one I'm going with. Okay, so let's start with the text itself. What is Greenblatt's major claim in this article? Um, I mean, I didn't really, like, find one that was, like, in the text, but I kind of think that he's trying to give off that there was, you can't really put a certain age on, like, so, that someone's going to become responsible all of a sudden. Right. And the fact that we've got too many mixed signals. You're right. What, it, what it's called, what you explain is an implicit uh, claim, implicit thesis, which means you can't go to it and highlight it. Um, in fact, it isn't until we get to, I think it's the fifth paragraph, there's somewhere in the middle of one of the paragraphs where he just comes out and says, this isn't something we're going to find easily. So what kind of evidence is he using to back up his claim? He's getting stories from people. Okay. We have that McNall guy mm -hmm. who couldn't rent a car. He has a lot of different sources from a lot of different places like a lot of different um yeah. okay and even within some of the laws he also cites some of the laws that are in different places and so he's he's just kind of pulling together these different resources to show how different places show what they think is maturity in young people and that would have to do with when you, they drink, when they drive, when they um, go see movies with adult content in it. So um, when we talk about the three R's, let's make sure that we all understand what those three R's are. What does the term rights, R-I-G-H-T-S, mean? Things you're entitled to. Things you're entitled to. Now, according to your parents... When are you entitled to things? When you become mature. Okay. When you 18. have responsibility. All right. Have they gradually been giving you some extra responsibilities, extra yeah. rights? Yeah. Like what? Um, being able to drive, mm -hmm. for example. Okay. Going out with friends, staying out yes. late. Good. Okay. So then what are R-I-T-E-S rights? traditions, mm -hmm. celebrations. Have you guys had any of these traditional celebrations that you are this age now, we are going to have you do this? Mm. Elaborate on it. Yeah. Well, 
actually I'll be getting to another slide pretty soon and then we can kind of add to that one. Um, so responsibilities, what one does what does that mean? Like responsible and knowing not to drink without your parents or like don't smoke or something like that. Okay. Not to drink without them. You can't drink with them. <laughs> <laughs> you can drink with your like have sips or whatever. No, if your parents are you, there or if you're in Ireland you, the age is only 14. This is true. This, this is one of the things that's inconsistent is when you look at the different states they did have different ages and um the, however there are places where it is illegal to provide alcohol to young people. Doesn't matter if you're a parent or not. But I you know you have to know where those places are and um I think there's even yeah, for me, for me, it was when do you start drinking coffee? So I'd when say twelve. See, I'd say about <laughs> when you get older, where you can't really do. Anything. I was gonna say don't just start drinking coffee just because like you want to drink coffee. I know coffee. that for me, that's what it was. I mean, I would watch my grandparents drink coffee. And I think, gee, I want to have some of that. And you take one sip of it and go, oh, you know, because the child's palate isn't meant for that. And caffeine's not something you want to give a whole lot of to kids. Anyway, it is an acquired taste, but it seems to me that kids are acquiring it younger and younger and younger. Mm -hmm. And um, go to the marketplace. You see all the like, like little kids who start with. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, Okay, so at what age do you believe students should independently stand up for their rights? I think people should, like, students should be able to stand up for their rights whenever they feel like there's something they need to stand up for, they should. I don't think there needs to be an age where it's like, okay, you can't stand up for your rights yet. Okay. So it should always be there then. You should yes. always be able to stand up for your Okay. Um, then is it possible to challenge your parents if, if there's something that you feel that they're being unreasonable about? I mean, to an extent. I mean, if it's something like when you're 15 and you want to go drinking or something and your parents say, no, like, that's not a right in the first place. And challenge so, them for something that's legal you can do. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, to an extent, like, if it's like, like, if they just keep denying it or whatever, it's just like, there's a point when you should just give up and just tough it out and wait. Well, part of um, when I think about this, a few years ago um, at East High School, there were some journalists who wanted to do a feature story about students who were homosexual on campus. And the staff, the, the administrative staff said, nope, can't do it. And they're saying, but it's our First Amendment rights. that It's our paper. We are the ones who are putting this together. We should have the right to do it. What do you think about that? I think they should be able to do that. Because it's everybody's right to have free speech? Yes. But on campus or off campus? Well, the thing was, it was an on-campus paper. Mm -hmm. Now, part of this was the school administrators were the ones paying for the paper. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who actually, they're kind of like the, the publishers. Yeah. And so they kind of get the say about that. But what they're saying is, is that the, the students... Uh, because it's a school paper, and because they're not quite ready to talk about this yet, they shouldn't publish it. Well, they should like ask the students, not the school. Okay, why is that? Because they're talking, they're studying the students' homosexuality on campus. Okay. That has nothing to do with the teacher. That's the. That's the point of it. Yeah. Good. Okay. This is what I was talking about earlier. So the rights that, um, here's some rights that are from different um, cultures that they take place at a certain time, certain age. Quinceañeras, have you heard of those? What age do they happen at? 15, mm -hmm. gee, I wonder how we figure that out. Do you know what a quinceañera is supposed to be for or what it's supposed to declare? Turning into a woman. I was, I was gonna say like I think it's that, but I don't want to say something that might not be right. <laughs> That's right. That's when she's a woman or presenting to the world, she is now available to be considered for marriage. Sort of. Mm -hmm. Fifteen. At fifteen. At fifteen. 
to Dang. serve me. <laughs> Another one is called the bar or bat mitzvah. This is a Jewish uh, ritual that happens when the boy, it's a bar mitzvah for a boy and it's a bat mitzvah for a girl when they turn 13. Have you guys heard of this one? Yeah. And when, during that, what is, what is the declaration being made during that ceremony? They're turning into like a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. Because they're able to do what? No. Sure. Yeah, I think it's like they're able to start preaching about. Not necessarily not, not preach, but like, read and understand the Torah. I knew, I knew that like at bar mitzvahs they read from the Torah, but right. I didn't know that's like what it was. It's it's that now they can read and understand what God wants what them really to do. Is. What it really is, yeah. Uh, the next one is a confirmation. Heard of these? Okay. Um. Do you know anything about confirmations? Catholic Church? I'm not, I honestly don't know what it um, stands for, but I have a lot of friends that are like in the process. In the process. How old are they? What are their ages? About 16, mm -hmm. 17. Yep. Confirmation is kind of on the idea of bar bat mitzvah, but they have other stages that they go through. Mm -hmm. So it is related to the church. It is related to the things they have to know about the church. So they get, they go through these courses and then they have to take a test and pass the course. And then they are confirmed. And the whole thing is about, again, are they able to understand what God wants them to do, uh, how they are to serve him. So, but again, that's, that's in the teenage years. And we've got good old sweet 16. <laughs> Would you say this is primarily a girl thing, or do guys kind of... I say girls. Okay, I disagree with that, because I think guys kind of, like, do somewhat of the same thing, but they just don't want to call it a sweet 16. They right. just want to say I say party. guys, whenever they turn 16, because I'm going to be turning 16, just throw a big party and hang out with a bunch of our friends. Is 16 a big number, though, or is it just, like, you would have the same party at 15 or 17? I would have the same party. Same party. I would. Okay. Why do what? What is it about sixteen that seems to be a magic age? What happens at sixteen? I think just for the United States, it's like you can drive once you're sixteen. Yeah, you yeah. drive. You're doing a lot of fun stuff. Mostly driving to me. Yeah, mostly. Driving. You can go to a public pool by yourself. Wow, I didn't know that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like all the signs are like you can't like they like don't really enforce it, but they're just like you have to be sixteen. I had never heard of that. Attended. Wow. <laughs> I don't think anyone listened to that long case. Nobody does. I didn't even know I about it. When I, was 10. I know. I like, they, public uh, pools, you yeah, have to you have to be so, 16 uh, to go by yourself to a oh, public yeah. pool. I knew that. Wow. I didn't. Yeah, just, That's I new. About it. I just can't follow it. Yeah, it's, like, no, it's kind of like a rule that no one listens to. So, were there any other rights that maybe I haven't gotten up here? Was there something that, and it doesn't necessarily have to be attached to a particular age but it's like okay you're this age now so now you're expected to do this anything else you can think of did i hit them all for gym membership gym membership how old do you have to be to have a gym membership it's not 12 or 13 i think it's like, or 14. 14 i'm not 14. sure but is that with or without parent permission without no 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 I think it's you need 16, need 16, permission. 16 without a parent 16 without a parent yeah because i know in that shape. For in shape. In shape. Isn't it 18? It, yeah, 18 is the magic parent. age where... No, to, like, sign up for one, um, you have to have a parent no matter 18 or older. Does no, it involve no. a contract? Yes. yes. If it involves a contract, the parent has the to parent. do it. Mm -hmm. 18 is the magic age that most can engage in the contracts. That's why if you're buying something on the web or with a credit card, you have to be 18 or older because you're entering into a contract that says... I will be paying the bill that you're going to charge to this credit card. Yeah. So, um, but you go by yourself. I go by yourself. You have to be like 14, something like that. Right. That you have a gym membership that was approved by your parents. Yeah. Yeah. Tattoos. What about tattoos? 18. 18? I call them when I was two. Two. <laughs> 15. 15 with, with parent, parent permission. permission. 18. Yeah. With okay. Permission. All right. And Personal you permission. have one. So, was that, was that something that was done? Obviously, you didn't do, do it, it yeah. voluntarily at two years old. But yeah. Is that part of a, a ritual? or is it's like it... a religious thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so. Um, but, but 
over there in Egypt, anyone can get like over there. Like everything gets sold to anyone. Right. Like I, I've seen like little kids. They just go up into like a hookah lounge and like they'll let them or like go buy cigarettes. Wow. Drinks, and that's a, there's really no law. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wonder why that is. <laughs> Denver's kind of like hmm, Egypt. I might want to visit there. <laughs> <laughs> okay at what age are all three meaningful to a person so this is where you're kind of like all right i'm i'm yes i'm having fun but i'm also acting responsibly what what age are you thinking 18 you're thinking 18 because by 18 i might already have my car and like actually no man. I have <laughs> i'd say 21 it'll Legally, eighteen illegal, twenty five. You, I'd say your brain. Not for me. Not still, for me. <laughs> your brain's pretty much done. Right. Growing. I'd say twenty five. In fact, where do you see that in Greenblatt's article? Do you remember where that is? No, I do not. Because we need okay. to find that one. Age twenty five. Age twenty five is when what happens? I just knew that. <laughs> right here somewhere. What paragraph is that? Five. Oh yeah, the prefrontal cortex and its links to other regions of the brain are not fully formed until age 25. So, and what this basically is explaining is your head is kind of like a plant. And so the, the brain develops faster than your cranium, what your brain is held in. And so what happens is, as it grows, the prefrontal cortex, which is the part that is responsible for all your rational thoughts, the part your conscience says to you, you better not do that. That's pretty stupid. (laughs) That part recedes and gets smaller. And that's why they figure that young people tend to make more irrational decisions than adults or even children. Do you, do you think there's a possibility that that's true? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Makes sense. So 25, we know that that is when, okay, it's fully developed. It's not going to get any bigger. It's not going to get any smaller, we hope. Uh, So let's just, (laughs) um, (laughs) that's right. So I went to the discussion boards. There were a couple of responses that I was um, found very interesting. This person said, I feel the senior year of high school is where you should begin to figure your life out and plan everything after that year. As a teenager, we began we begin to be more exposed to alcohol, R-rated movies, and sexual intercourse. I believe once you turn 18, you have the freedom to do you. The age I believe you should start getting your driver's license in R-rated movies is 16. I think the ages they have at the moment are reasonable. I don't think they should change one age to allow drinking, driving, and going into the military. The ages they have now are reasonable. Guys agree with that? Yes, I think so. I mean, I just think it's really unrealistic for them to change the ages. So it's like, obviously, it's like realistic to stay with it is. So, um... We had found out earlier it is 18 for the R-rated movies, even with the NC-17s you're looking at. Um, Not that I'm asking you to bury your soul being recorded, but do you think there are a lot of people out there who watch R-rated movies who are under the age of 18? No question. I do. Oh, me (laughs) too. Now, why, um, why do you think... There are some people who shouldn't be going to see those movies. Why do you think they put the age limit on there? So it doesn't know. just like the content and like how in the first one you said you when you were little you watched something and yeah, you started. Yeah, I they, t- they start doing. When I was in junior high, I lived right down the street from uh, my school. So at lunchtime, I could just walk down and go have lunch and come back. I had enough time. And my mother was working, and so I would be by myself. I was a latchkey kid, and I'd go in, and I'd fix my lunch, and then I'd watch TV while I was eating. The only movie channel, there were very few movie channels at that point. The movie channel was what we had, and The Deer Hunter was on. 
I don't know if you guys know anything about The Deer Hunter. Nope. Horribly nope. violent movie, including the one scene where they're all playing Russian roulette. Mm -hmm. and somebody loses. And I'm eating my lunch. Mm -hmm. And I'm 12 years old. And I learned my lesson that day that because I was traumatized. I had to go back to school and I had seen something that was very disturbing. I'd never known about this concept before. So yeah, there are some people who shouldn't be seeing certain content. In fact, there's, I think I should still not be seeing certain R-rated movies. Wait, are you still traumatized from it? I will never watch it again. I, I don't even, anybody I says the deer watch. hunter to me. No, thank you. What I don't want deer hunters too. <laughs> there's no deer hunter too. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'll there's that movie up now when I get home. <laughs> I'm <gonna> watch it. <laughs> there goes Denver. Um, so I think that there is some con well, I don't know. They say that anything super violent, gratuitous sex, anything like that is really something that 16, 17 year olds should not be seeing. Do you agree? Mm. Mm, I not say. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're gonna find a way to see it, even if it isn't. No matter because like, well, you can go see it with a parent. Mm -hmm. No, and when we watch it on so, movies, like when we like, watch them, like we're not going purposely for that stuff. We're going for the movie. That stuff just happens to be in it. Okay. I've had it happen where I went to go watch a movie and I didn't know it was already a parent paid for me, and he just said that he was gonna go watch it with me, and he didn't. He he just paid for me and my friend. Do you remember what the movie was? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> it was, was it our because it was a scary movie, so yeah. it was violent. Yeah. Yeah. It was a um, great movie though. I do know that if they if they drop the F bomb twice, it's automatically rated R. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously we don't want you exposed to that type of language because our hope is you would never use that type of language. Does it work? No. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good for you, Marcelino. <laughs> um so it's just, it's, some of these things are thought to be, yeah, and, and now Marcelino, you mm -hmm. made a good point earlier than the first session this morning. Do you remember what that point was about between 18 and 21, what happens? Oh, for drinking? It could be drinking. It could be these R-rated movies. It could be, muted it. I, um, it's dropping out. Oh. Actually, you can see my, the little three dots there. So okay. we're still recording. Go yeah, ahead. So 21 for drinking, right? So, if 18. Wait, I forgot what I said. Well, that was what, what they said in the article. Remember in the article what? This part. Uh, the college part. The part about the college oh, yeah. deans. So, what so did they say? College deans. The deans in colleges. What did they say should happen? Oh, about binge, binge drinking? Because there's binge drinking, what yeah. should happen? It should not be lowered to 18. Should yeah. not be lowered. It should be lowered. It should, it should be, be lowered. Wait, what, what paragraph was it? Seven. Do you know what pa seven? seven? Okay. Yeah. So read what paragraph seven says. Oh, about the three year stages of the youth development. And it also says somewhere over here. <laughs> read it, Marcelino. Just it. <laughs> Wait, was it on paragraph seven or paragraph 10? I don't think it's on seven. So maybe it's in seven. I don't know. I don't have mine in front of me now. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to find it. All right, here, paragraph four. Four. Recently, many of these lines drawn between adolescence and maturity have been called into question. For example, the presidents of under 35 university are campaigning to consider lowering the drinking age from 21. They note that binge drinking on campus is rampant despite the structure and argue that if students are given the right to drink at an earlier age, they might handle it more responsibly. The argument is a reprise of the one that came up four years ago when servicemen came home from <clears throat> Vietnam. Then the compliment war was the soldiers were old enough to die, but not to vote. The 26th Amendment took care of the problem by lowering the voting age to 18. Today, military personnel returning from Iraq and Afghanistan are left to question why they can <clears throat> fight America's <clears throat> wars, but still can't patronize its bars. Right. So the whole thing about drinking, you had said in that in that period of time, the three years between 18 and 21, that these young people are learning what? Um, drink responsibly. How to drink more responsibly. That's the argument. But what do you, do you I think? I remember what I said. No, okay. All right. So I said 
18 that like so on they're gonna like if they have a friend that's 21 that they're gonna start drinking with them of course find a way to drink with somebody so if they lower it to 18 it'll be easier and easier for low like kids younger like 15 14 stuff like that to get it from 18 years old okay 18 year old so we've got two thoughts here it can help them to learn how to do it more responsibly or it forces the, it can actually push that experimental age even further down the line. What do you guys think of that? Well, I think like, so for example, like in Europe, the drinking age is lower, but Same there's not Ireland. as much like alcohol problems as there is in Europe. Cause it's like, since it's available to them, they don't feel like they need to sneak around and like do it in an unsafe environment. Okay. I agree. Same so, with Ireland because you're, the age is only 14. Right. So. Um, and I think they don't care. They're they're it's stronger alcohol there too, so I think they automatically have asbestos lining in them or something. Yeah, you got some special power drinking. Yeah, well, <laughs> nothing I have. Okay, uh, here's another post from the discussion board. I would draw the line to separate adulthood from childhood at drinking. I would draw the line here because I believe that drinking is something adults should do. I don't really think that there is one specific age to be established as the threshold because some things should have a higher age set. I believe that drinking and fighting in the military should have the same age of 23. For watching R-rated movies, I believe that the age should be set depending on what is happening in the movie. My question is, where do they get 23 from? Well, where do you think? I mean, you're right. There's no... Why, so first why 23? On how... Um, you have to run a car at 23. Okay. Sort of the contract or thingy. I it was 25. No, it's 23. It's 23 oh, in it's the 23? first paragraph of that, yeah. It says he wasn't allowed to. He was. It says, that he tried to, and I think... Um, go ahead and read what it says, Emma. It says, but McNall in the 30 sticks still bristles at the memory of something he wasn't allowed to do at 23. Go down to the airport and rent a car. Okay. Because I think renting the car would have been 25, 25, 25. Yeah. yeah. And so again, it has to do with that, that entering into the contracts. You know, are you responsible enough to enter into the contract? Well, if you're responsible enough to, you know, enter into the contract of military, I would think that, you you know, borrowing a car should be kind of a no-brainer. How would they get that for 23? Well, for which one? Fighting in the military and drinking. Yeah, that's adult. So what this person is saying is that this is adult behavior and adults are not adults until 23. That's what this person is saying. Was it proven it was 25? I, I think don't it's know. 25 because your brain's fully developed at 25 and that's when they think you're completely mature. Yeah. Now that is kind of yeah. like the end year. So it could be brains. that, you know, people's brains might be fully developed at 20, 21. 22, 45, it's possible. If your brain is fully developed at age 25, like the research they've done, mm -hmm. why isn't the drinking age 25 and it's 21? Other than the whole three, the seven year process thing. This is exactly why Greenblatt says what he does about there's no easy answer to figuring any of this out. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're being asked this question, you're going to have to make kind of a balance yourself. You're going to have to figure out, you know, what are the, perhaps it's not an age, but rather, you know, a show of responsibility in certain things. So if we look at the back at the um, essay, and so your task is really what's in the bold part at the bottom. What is the age of the resp age of responsibility? That is, when should a person be considered to be an adult? Use your notes, readings, observations, and your experience to support your position. In your response, be sure to consider all three R's, rights, rights, and responsibility involved in becoming a mature person and adult. So Denver, I think you already have your thesis because you've said it a couple of times. What's the EH you've picked? 18. You are not Denver. Wait, <laughs> age of responsibility. Age when you are now fully an adult. You're thinking 18 now, but you were saying 25, well, 25 earlier. 25 because your brain's fully developed, but 18 because you also can go in the military. You're, you can get your license at 18. You get 
pretty much all this new stuff mm -hmm. right then. So I'd say 18, yeah. Okay. Emma, what do you think? This is so hard for me because I really can't think of like a perfect age. Just people are going to complain if you change it or if you keep it the same. Okay. Wait, I have a question. Yes. All right. So why is drinking at 21, all right, but smoking all that stuff is at 18? <laughs> We're never gonna that that's the point of the that's the point of the let's look at that because let's look at it in terms of the three R's. Yeah. Okay. Responsibility. Which holds the greater responsibility? Drinking or smoking? Drinking. Why? Because you can get drunk and kill drive somebody. and kill somebody. So it, because it has some kind of impact on your on your cognitivity, on motor skills. But smoking also has on your lungs and health. Mm-hmm. So why hasn't smoking been moved up to 21? Or 21 moved down to 18. Can go both drinking ways. down, you mean moving drinking down yeah. to 18? Okay. You can like go both ways. I just think like, I don't even... Okay. The point that Marcelino made in the first session, I think was a really good one. And I almost hate to say it because I want you to write it, but, um, and I, I, but it's something to consider. This also gives me a check to see who's actually listening during these Socratic seminars. Marcelino's point earlier was, if you start these at 18, making 18, because 18 is when you've graduated high school, mm -hmm. you're making your own decisions about where you're going to live, what you're going to do, what path your life is going to take. That's the age that this society has created to be. End of school age, you're an adult, according to most of the legal activities you can do. Mm -hmm. Now, between 18 and 21, you have a growth period. And that period is when you are learning about responsibilities. That's usually when people, when the young people go into debt, when they figure out maybe college really isn't the right thing for me. Um, you know what? Having a, a bottle of Jack Daniels is probably not a good idea all at once. So they're, they're making these these decisions and they're suffering consequences in that three-year period by 21 are they have they learned their lessons well enough do you need to move a little further into that 25 oh i got one story with a kid who's still in jail right now oh he's yeah up. there's um uh one of the modules that you will do as a senior if you're still with us I think, I'm pretty sure this is being rewritten right now, is the juvenile justice one. And that is um, the Supreme Court has ruled that they cannot uh, sentence a person under the age of 18 who's committed a crime under the age of 18. They cannot sentence that young person to death or life in prison. They have to at some point get another chance at life. That was not always the case. So we have a young man, I believe his name is Nathaniel Tate, who... Uh, was mimicking what he saw on wrestling and killed his sister. And he was sentenced first to death, but then they commuted it to life in prison when the Supreme Court said that they couldn't do that anymore. He was just practicing. He was just practicing because he didn't know what he was doing. They still put him in an adult prison, and they still gave him an adult sentence. Was that right? No. So that's where you're having to look at. You know, when does when does the mind start to think like an adult? You don't have to for the for the um, for this essay. You don't have to pick the magic age. Your argument can be there is no magic age, because in fact that's what Greenblatt's is, isn't it? So you can go with his ar his argument. I say with that, like, it's it kind of sticking both. in my mind. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's like he accidentally killed her, but it's like he killed someone still, and it's like, it's a like, I don't know how old it was. I don't know like. She was old. um, either five or eight. I can't remember. Okay, so if it's oh, a little kid geez. and you're wrestling, yeah, like, what did you think was gonna happen? Like, if you're, I don't know how old the guy was, but obviously probably like a teenager. Three, no, thirteen. He was thirteen. I, I was okay, so that's that just, was yeah. Over. He's like, forty years right now, but don't you yeah. think he should deserve another chance? I mean, yeah. yeah, I don't think he should be put there forever, but at the same time, it's like, how much of an accident was it really? Like, I mean, you probably didn't mean to kill her, but, like, you didn't think you weren't going to hurt a little girl by wrestling her? That's the whole thing. The, how much of responsibility, when we know right from wrong, okay, we 
and as young, how young are you before you start learning right from wrong? You know right from wrong, like, by the age of, like, at least three, it's like, okay. I mean. Hopefully. I think eight. eight. Because see, at that point, there's right and wrong, and then right responsibility comes along, and somewhere along that timeline, then you reach to the point where you are responsible. You and you alone are responsible for your actions and your decisions. So people's perspective on like everything like changes. Like I've known people since sixth grade, seventh grade, all right, and they were like they wouldn't touch anything like bad or that stuff, mm -hmm. all right. And now like in high school, like they're separated. They're like with. All that stuff, right? Like the perspective yeah. changes. You never really know what's going. This is true. So you're, um, and this can still be your argument. We're not asking you to come up with a magic number, but we kind of want your thoughts on how we measure it or where we should start looking at what this age is. Since eighteen seems to be the age at this point, I think that's what a lot of people go with. But it does come down to why why drinking at 21 and smoking at 18 why uh military at 18 but renting a car at 25 you know there's a lot of questions here so the way you want to structure your body paragraph and i've shown this in a couple of other different ways but just to remind you here's your topic sentence um then you present some of the evidence now the evidence is not just green black you can also use your own personal observations or experiences because that's what the prompt says you can do. But you do need to have uh, at least one or two things coming from this article. And then you're going to explain how the evidence relates to that topic sentence. Give your reader your thought process on it. Just because you put the evidence there doesn't mean, see, I told you I was right. It doesn't work that way. Then you're gonna do it again. Another piece of evidence and another explanation. And then finally, the analysis on how the quote relates to the topic sentence and then how that kind of ties together the idea for your thesis or transitions you into the next paragraph. How many bullets are up there? There are seven. Seven. So how many sentences should you have? Seven. seven minimum it might take you a couple of these might take you two sentences to kind of explain clearly enough so what i've done is i've actually written for you a model paragraph to show you how this would be put together and this is just what i came up with um, many cultures particularly in western religions celebrate rites of passage when a person is in his or her teens however this is real this really is too young to be considered an adult Alan Greenblatt, in his essay, What is the Age of Responsibility? And this is the first time it's mentioned in the essay. Once you do that, you can just use Greenblatt also states. Uh -huh. uh, describes the maturity of the human brain. Quote, the prefrontal cortex and its links to other regions of the brain are not fully formed until age 25, much later than anyone realized. And because we're just using the one article, you can just simply put the paragraph number that this appears in. This portion of the brain is what controls the person's ability to make logical decisions. It is frightening to think that a young man in the military can be given a firearm at the age of 18 before his brain may fully realize the consequences of its use. Greenblatt also notes that even the Greek philosopher Aristotle believed young men were considered adults at 21 because that is when they were able to fit into a suit of armor. Yet our culture allows adolescents to enlist in the military to be sent to far reaches of the earth and fight unknown enemies for reasons they may not be old enough to understand. Clearly, 18 is just too young to be considered a responsible adult. So that's a model body paragraph. You would, in order for it to have sufficient essay, you need two of those, plus your introduction, plus your conclusion. So that's a four paragraph minimum. Um, the introduction though is short, it's just a hook and a thesis. The hook is, you know, it could even be, how come at 18 I can go buy cigarettes, but I can't buy a bottle of beer? And then say, there are too many inconsistencies in how we measure the age of responsibility. Okay, so that is the essay you're looking at. 
Are there any questions you guys have about the article, about the task, about what you need to do? Is it considered the final? It is in a way because it's your last module for the year or for, well, the for semester, semester, for the year 2017, that's your last one. Um, and what happens is since there's no final exam, you kind of have, this is the one where you're the most on your own when it comes to the essay. But also consider that the lowest score will be dropped. In fact, I think it already has been dropped. It has been, hasn't it, Marcelino? Uh, for Have, what? For, when you go back and look at your grader, they're kind of like grayed out ones? Yeah. Okay. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've programmed Canvas to drop the lowest score. There's still this essay to go. If you've done well in the first three, and we and this is the one that's dropped, it's not going to affect you that much. But if your other essays have been kind of low and you think you can nail this one and you write this one and this happens to be higher, it'll drop one of the lower ones before. So in a way, it is kind of your final yes. You can still get the help from me. And, and I think there's still a peer review. So, But it's it's the we last one. Three though, right? right. And so if you, get, if you get everything done, and what I'm going to do probably starting tomorrow is I'm going to put the zeros in, even though these aren't due yet, I'm going to put the zeros in because at that point you can see what your grade actually looks like and you can make the determination to stop when you think I like that grade. All right. So like in, in theory, like if we're happy with our grade, even if there's assignments missing, we just stop. You could. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll I'll be I'll be doing that probably tomorrow or the next day. It just depends on how busy I am. I've, uh, the uh, freshmen are done. Juniors finish today. You and the seniors are the only ones who have one essay left to do, and you both have until next Monday. Yeah. Well, the twentieth is the last day anything is due. Mm -hmm. That's that's the day that at eleven fifty nine. The course will close, which means that at 12 a.m. on the 21st, you're going to go onto Canvas, and it's not going to let you into any of the classes. So that's what that's what's going to happen. Two more weeks until the course. Stop. I know. <laughs> any other questions? No. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming in, and we will um, get this posted. Thank you. Take forever to. Come on, there you go. Stop.